Hey Ronay, Marbazi, or welcome to Civilization 5 Data Deception Let's Play. So, what is this all about? First of all, I'm going to play a Civilization that I wanted to play for a while now, the Aztecs. And the main theme of this game is that I will be playing against all the most deceptive AI leaders. My criteria for this is very simple. I manually picked all the leaders with highest deceptive diplomacy bias. So in this case, all of these leaders right here have a deception score of at least 7. Which, surprisingly enough, does not include England, because England has deception bias of 6, and all of these people right here have deception bias of at least 7. So that's going to be China, Russia, the Ottomans, Napoleon, Germany, Carthage, and the Huns. And also me, Monty. As for the map that I'm going to use, since all of these AI leaders are batshit crazy, I'm going to need some kind of advantage, if only a small one. And so that's going to be the map that I will be using. This is actually a map template that I never played on the channel before, so that works quite nicely. And that's going to be Lake's map. I set world age, temperature and rainfall to random, but I set bodies of water to large lakes, that's the middle option. You can have small lakes, large lakes, and seas. Seas is a little bit overboard, I did try that, but large lakes should work quite nicely. So, that's the game setup. No advanced options other than quick combat and quick movement. Let's get started, this will be a very interesting game, let's just say. I am using Epic Game Pace, data difficulty obviously, standard map size. Let's get started. So, before we get started, let's talk about the Aztecs real quick. Their unique ability is that they gain culture for the Empire, for each enemy unit killed. So, that's quite a good one, if you go to war a lot, which is what I tend to do quite often. <laughs> their unique unit is the Jaguar, which replaces the Warrior. So, he does get obsolete very quickly, but Jaguar Warriors have some really good unique promotions. So, specifically, they get a combat bonus in Forest and Jungle. And more importantly, they heal 25 damage when they kill a unit. So this can be quite nice. My plan with these guys is to get a bunch early on and try to keep them alive through the entire game. Promote them all the way to infantry. That's my plan for this game, basically. And their unique building is one of the better unique buildings in the game, I would say. The floating gardens. This gives you plus 15% food. And this is not plus 15% excess food. This is plus 15% total food. Not only that, it also gives you plus 2 food on each lake tile. So this is a great unique building. And this will work nicely with this map, lakes. So let's get started then. That also means I should build every city on a river tile or adjacent to a river or adjacent to a lake. As for the mods that I'm using in this game, I am using InfoAddict again. And I'm using Enhanced User Interface. As always, you can find links to both in the description below. So, let's find the location for our capital city. Do I want to move? We do have salt, so that's fantastic. That's the best luxury resource that I could possibly get at the start of this game. So, I'm really happy about that. Do you want to settle on spot? This does look reasonable enough. I don't think I want to move. I do have a lake to the northwest. I do have one lake to the south. I have two unique luxuries in range. Okay, I'm going to settle on spot. Alright, let's do it then. So, we will start from a scout as usual. I might go for monument after the scout, but we'll see about that. If I don't find culture very early, I might actually build a monument myself. So, pottery, research, obviously. And let's get started. I need to find my neighbors, grab as many ruins as possible, find some more city locations. Oh nice, we got plus some population from the first ruin. That's awesome actually. Let's see, I might actually work the wine until I get the salt. Just to get the two gold per turn. Alright, so the one challenge of this game is going to be getting enough Jaguar Warriors before they get obsolete. Which means I'll have to dedicate some production towards Jaguar Warriors while they are still possible to recruit. Because once they are gone, I won't be able to get their unique promotion. 
So extra combat on forest and jungle, and more importantly, the heal on any of my future units. I need to get them now. Well, not literally right now, but before they get completely obsolete. And I'll have to balance that with regular early game progression, because that's the most important part of the game. The first 100-150 turns are super important, so I can't dedicate too much production towards military, because then I will neglect expansion and city development. I can't afford that. Right, and there's our first neighbor, that's Bismarck. Wow, he's very, very close. I might even steal a worker from him. I'm definitely considering it. Okay, he moved away with that worker, but I might steal that worker. That's certainly not a bad idea. Wow, more salt. This is an awesome starting location, I have to say. Let's grab that monument ourselves, since I didn't get culture from ruins. And I want to get started on my culture ASAP. Explore this way, there's another ruin site. I need to find good city locations. I can already see some really good city locations. Let's declare war on this guy. I usually don't do this, but I can steal his worker. So that's going to be very useful. We got a map. There's a city state to the northwest. So let's go meet it to get our 30 gold. And now I'll just sign a peace treaty as soon as I can. Get out of here with that worker. I might pillage his pasture, but I don't want to lose the Jaguar Warrior. That would be pretty bad. Let's just get out of there. Right. So that gives me a worker super early. That's like the earliest worker I ever had. Oh nice, another ruin. I'm glad I didn't miss that then. Let's not move just yet. I don't want to leave the worker undefended. And another ruin. This is an awesome start of this game so far. So, 70 gold. Not bad, I'll take that. And we got 30 culture. Right. I will still finish the monument. But now I can... Well, now I can get either tradition opener or honor opener. I'm actually a little bit on the fence about this. I did test both openers as Monty. Honor is quite nice. Because if I go aggressively after barbarians then my unique ability will stack with the Honor Opener. Since Honor Opener gives me culture for the Empire, for each Barbarian killed. So, okay, let's grab Honor Opener. I got that 30 culture from the ruins, and hopefully I'll be able to find some Barbarians around here. Now I need mining, to be able to get mines on the salt. I'll let the monument finish. So, let's get that worker safely. To my capital, there's a city state down here, so check that out. Attack this guy, I'll just sign a peace treaty as soon as I can. I could go pillage some of his improvements, that might not be a bad idea. That will definitely slow him down, and I mean, stealing the worker from the AI will already slow down the AI significantly. <laughs> Another ruin. Oh yeah, there's a ruin to the north. I should grab that before someone else does. So let's get this one with the worker, that should be fine. We got archery. This is a great start so far. Any more ruins around here? Just the one to the north. So two more turns for the monument. Then we'll grab a shrine to get our pantheon. If I can get faith from salt, that's what I'm going to grab. That seems to be a no-brainer with this starting location. A lot of tanja around here. And another city state. What city-state is this? Oh yeah, that's a mercantile city-state. That will be useful for happiness. Cultured city-state. And Kiev is also a cultured city-state. So far, so good. I don't think I could have planned a better opener than this. We have salt. We have a huge lake right here. And these are all lake tiles, which means I'll get four food from that one. That's kind of the reason I'm using this map in the first place. But I couldn't be sure that I'll get a nice lake nearby. Will he actually pay us for peace? No, he won't. But well, I'm not going to continue this war. I just wanted to grab that worker and that's it. I might declare war again once I get more Jaguars. But I don't want to focus on war too much. Hit that Barbarian. That's 18 culture from that one Barbarian. And we got a little bit of influence with the city-state. 
don't have mining yet, so I can get started on that farm. And let's maybe go find more ruins. And I need to scout to the north of my capital a bit to find the best city locations around here. This is a pretty nice area, I have to say. I don't like all this Tanja though. I do have marble to the west, so I might want to grab that. But let's check this area to the north. There is the natural wonder. It's not the best natural wonder ever, but it's a natural wonder nonetheless. It might be worth grabbing. If we get the proposal in the World Congress that gives culture from natural wonders in the future. So now I'm going to grab tradition opener. And... Let's see. Let's grab animal husbandry to see horses on the map. But actually I should grab bronze working first. Because I'll need to upgrade my jaguar warriors to swordsmen. And I need to have iron for that. So bronze working next. No, I'm not selling you embassy, buddy. There's Napoleon. This game will have some interesting diplomacy, I have to say. <laughs> you can't really trust AIs with very high deceptiveness. Because they will backstab you if they feel you're weak. Especially ones like Napoleon, as you could see in my game as Mongolia. So yeah, I'll need to watch my back in this game, that's for sure. Shrine is almost done. So... I don't really need a worker right now, I can get started on Jaguar. I'll need as many Jaguars as possible, while I can still train them. That's kind of obvious. Russia is very close to us. Yeah, I'll need to think about who's going to be my friend in this game. Because even though these AIs are very deceptive, I'm going to need some trading partners, some research agreement partners, and things like that. So yeah, that's still going to be important. And we got a barbarian camp, nice. What is it? Yeah, I'm going to go after barbarian camps aggressively. Because I need that culture. And I need to take advantage of my honor opener. Now that I grabbed it, we have two barbarian camps around here. Let's check the tile assignments. That's going to go like this. Just to make the city grow faster. And I might just wait for that jaguar. If I want to get barbarians aggressively, then I'm going to need more jaguars. The scout can do the exploration. I'll bring that jaguar back. I could leave the barbarian camps up and then just kill the barbarian units that they spawn. Which is not a terrible idea, actually. It might be worth doing because I might get a city state quest for these barbarian camps eventually. This barbarian camp is right next to Colombo. And this one is pretty close to Kiev. So I might actually wait for a city-state quest. Russia is sending a settler, alright. I don't want them to settle towards me. So I might chill around here with the scout. Just to discourage them from settling right here. Okay, I think they went west. So that's fine. Finish this mine faster. So do I want to be friendly with Germany or with Russia? Well, I won't be very friendly with Germany. Yeah, they have some early concerns about my warmongering. I have no idea why. What are you talking about, bro? Why would you ever think that? I'm such a peaceful person, to be honest. Not mind the worker that I borrowed. I guess I'll have to be friendly with Russia then. Alright, that's what we'll do then. They will have some excess copper. So I can buy that. I can trade salt for copper with them. Sounds good. So let's heal this guy up and wait for my second Jaguar. Declaration of friendship, yes, that works for me. And if I could get Russia to attack Germany, <laughs> that would be great. This is one location that I would like to grab. That's a lot of gems. Yeah, this is an awesome location. If I settle right here, I would get all the gems. I would also get the Grand Mesa. But hold on, I need to settle on a river. Yeah, to take advantage of floating gardens. On the other hand, this location won't have any lakes. Still, floating gardens is an awesome unique building. It's definitely worth getting even without any lakes in range. That's always plus 15% food. So this location right here, it will be a little bit close to the Nochtitlan. I still have some time to decide, but... I think 
That will be the city right here. That will also give me the bananas. That will give me the Grand Mesa. That will give me the gems. All the gems around here. I won't have this salt in range. But I can't really get it in range. Unless I don't settle on a river. I can't get everything with one city. That's just not going to happen. And then I would settle a city to the west, possibly. But this will be the second city for sure. This is just too good to ignore. So there's the Jaguar. And next we're going to grab what? Granary. And I'll switch to Settler once city grows to pop 4. That's what I usually do. This is a pretty good start. I don't need to watch my back against Bismarck, especially now that I have a red modifier with him. Legalism. Okay then, let's go grab that Barbarian camp. Hopefully they will spawn some extra Barbarian units. That's culture for me. And fingers crossed for some iron. Awesome, I have iron right next to my capital. That's only two iron, but hey, I'll take it. Better than nothing. Is that the only source of iron around here? That's the only one that I can see. There's some iron right next to Berlin. Colombo will have some iron in the future. Okay, this is the only source of iron that I can see right now. Oh, and I built a farm right on top of it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's fine. So, let's wait for this guy to spawn something. There's no huge rush to kill him. Now I can grab animal husbandry. To see horses on the map. There's China. No quest for that camp. I would definitely like to get a quest for one of these camps. Colombo is a mercantile city state. Right, let's keep moving this way. We have 335 gold. I'll probably save the gold for a settler. To just buy a settler outright instead of having to train one myself. Oh, barbarians are coming. Oh yeah, they will pillage my farm, unfortunately. There's Suleiman. Let's move back and huddle that barbarian then. I'll wait for a city-state quest. But I should keep an eye on these camps, because AI might destroy them. Oh yeah, that barbarian will actually pillage my salt now. Oh well, whatever. Doesn't really matter all that much. It's not like I'll drop into the negatives. I won't. Germany wants declaration of friendship. Alright, well, I have to remember that all these AIs in this game are very deceptive. So just because they ask for declaration of friendship does not mean they won't declare war on me. As you could see in case of Napoleon, in my game as the Mongols. I would definitely like to get them to fight each other ASAP. So I might grab Russia fairly early to get Russia to attack Germany. That's probably what I'll do. No quests yet. Is this salt done yet? There's Dido. So did I meet everyone yet? Almost everyone, I think. Yep. I need one more. Who's last? I'm not sure who's last. But I need one more civilization. Okay, promotion for a Jaguar. Very nice. Doesn't really matter which one I'm going to grab. Let's go for shock. No extra barbarians here, but we can do a little bit of damage. Barbarians do not regenerate. Bismarck completed the Great Library. All right. I will probably go after Berlin. That's a pretty nice city. Yeah, it has two tiles with wheat, so that's quite nice. Two tiles with sheep. Not a lot of luxuries, but it has iron. It does have wine and gems. Yeah, that's a pretty nice city. And two tiles with lakes. I want that. And since my second city will be to the east, I will be able to connect these cities quite nicely. And Germany tends to be really good on data, from my experience, so shutting them down early might be a good idea. I like that plan. So, okay, now we got a quest for that camp. I should probably go deal with that. I might destroy this one, because otherwise Russia probably will. AI usually goes after Barbarian camps quite aggressively. Especially camps right next to their territory. So yeah, that's a good idea. Just get rid of this ASAP. Come on, hurry up with that mine. Animal husbandry. 
And we have horses in range of Tenochtitlan. Awesome. Right, let's get rid of this guy. So that's 16 culture, not bad. Barbarian camp with a quest. Well, I won't be getting that one. I could totally steal a worker if I really want to. No, this is under protection of three different AIs. That would be a fairly terrible idea. So, what do we need to research now? I have mining already. I might want to grab construction, but let's grab writing to get a library. I might have to grab early construction just to get composite bowmen. If I want to take Berlin early, I'm going to need composite bowmen. That's kind of obvious. Let's avoid that barbarian camp. So how do I take advantage of this lake? I could settle a city somewhere here, but I would have to settle towards Russia. And this is a pretty bad location. I could settle somewhere around here, just to grab these salt tiles. But if I settle a city to the west, I need to get the marble in range. Which means I would have to settle down here, or I would have to settle directly on top of salt. Hmm. Yeah, I'll need to think about this. I could also get a city here. This might be the best location. This is a huge lake over here. But yeah, if I settle here, that's going to give me wheat in range. I will still have both tiles with salt. I would have the marble. Something to consider. I still have time to decide. The location to the east will be my first city for sure. So, good timing on that granary. I'll get started on that settler right now. So that's going to be 13 turns. Alright, good enough. Let's go take care of that barbarian camp. To get our city-state influence. And keep exploring. So, we have 387 gold. I need to repair the salt and then probably sell it for gold. I already have declaration of friendship. So I could sell that for 360. And I can definitely use that money right now. I will most likely just save 680 to buy a settler outright. Again, to not waste time recruiting that settler myself. That will make my city grow faster. So I need to decide this first location now. The exact tile that I want to settle on. I still think this is the best one. That will give me the natural wonder. But I could also settle here. No, this is a little bit too close to Berlin, I think. I can't settle here because then I won't have fresh water access. So no floating gardens. Yeah, this will be the best location. I just don't see anything better. I could also settle to the south. Hmm. On this hill, for example. This would be a decent production city. I would still have some gems in range. Yeah, I would have two tiles with gems in range. I would have two tiles with wheat in range. I could also settle both. I'll have to decide that in the next 10 turns or so. But these are both very good locations. Landed Elite next. Okay, so this guy should die very quickly. That will give me some influence with Colombo. Bye. And a little bit of money and culture. Now we got another barbarian come to the north. I'll go grab that too. And hey, this is experience for my units at the same time. As for research, I guess we need to go for a philosophy now. Yep, just to be done with that. Or actually, I need the wheel to actually build the floating gardens. I need to grab that in Tenochtitlan ASAP. I have four tiles that will benefit from the bonus. And we got our Pantheon. So that's going to be Faith on Copper, Iron and Salt. Yeah, that seems to be the best option here. Yeah, that's definitely the best option. I also have Iron, so that's great. And the best part about this Pantheon is that I don't even need a mine. So I'll get Faith from Iron immediately. Okay, one more guy here. Looks good. Some more turns for that settler. I actually have a good chance to get my own religion in this game. Yeah. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Next. 
Oh yeah, I can trade the salt now. So I can get a lot of money from this guy. I can get full 360 gold. Perfect. And that gives us over 800. I could actually buy a settler literally right now. Oh hey, Germany is sending a trade route to us. That's great. So do I want to buy a settler literally right now and maybe delay the other one? I could do that. Okay, let's do that. That will speed up our first city. So now, which exact tile do I want to settle that on? I'm still thinking this is the best location. Especially with the bananas to the northwest. I just don't see anything better. Yeah, it's a little bit close to the street land. Hmm. Only four tiles away, so a lot of tiles will overlap. But I'm going to decide that in the next part. So this one is done, and since this is a first part of a new series, I will always appreciate any extra support. So if you enjoyed this first episode, feel free to leave a like and comment. It does actually have a real effect. These things aren't just for show. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.